Hey, we're going to talk about sound intensity now. This is an intense discussion we're going to have. We're going to define the sound intensity as the power passing through a surface divided by the area of that surface. So if you think about uh, a speaker that's producing sound, and the sound is coming out from that speaker and spreading out as it does, if the um, power of the sound passing this area is P, then, and this area you denote by A sub 1, the, the area of this, um, this surface, then the power, or the intensity, is the power per unit area. And let's remind ourselves a little bit about what power is. From last semester, or whenever you took um, Physics 2110, we defined power as an energy or a work divided by a time. Energy is measured in joules, time is measured in seconds, and a joule per second is, and most of the, I think some of you will remember, a watt. One joule per second equals one watt. And that's the very same watt that you measure the, the strength of light bulbs, 100 watt light bulb, 50 watt light bulb, etc., etc. That's what that means. So power is an energy per unit time. That's just a review from last semester. And uh, it's measured in watts, joules per second. And, and so what we're talking about here for intensity is that power, joules per second, energy per unit time, divided by the area. So as this wave propagates out from the speaker, it's spread out over a larger area. And so the intensity here at, at point one is the power spread out over area A1. Well, what about the intensity here? Same power. We're talking about the same amount of power passing through here as here. The difference is that the area is now larger. And so if the area, A2, is larger than A1, then the intensity is going to be less. So it's, the way to think about it is, is how much power is spread out over a particular area. So power per unit area for intensity. Um, here's an example. Um, just plugging in numbers for the example that we did here. The power is the same in both cases. 12 times 10 to the minus 5 watts. Actually, sound does not carry that much energy, honestly. Uh, it's a very, it's pretty weak. If you were to uh, propose to the National Science Foundation that you wanted to capture sounds from cars or whatever and use that as an energy source, I think you'd get laughed at because there's not that much energy in sound. Um, so that might be a typical uh, amount of energy f coming from a speaker. This is not the, uh, if you think about a 40 watt um, system, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the actual amount of power and energy in the air itself, which is much less than what your speakers are rated at. Um, if the area one is four square meters right here, so two times two, for example, and the area two is 12 square meters, um, then the intensity out here is going to be less, I2 is going to be less than I1. Now, if a source emits sound uniformly in all directions, then the intensity will depend on the distance from the source in a very simple way. So what we're thinking about here is a source of sound that, that propagates in all directions. So this would be, a, um, I mean, the simplest case would be a sphere that's that's pulsing. So it's going out in all directions and it's going to act like a speaker that compresses the air and then rarefies the air and sends those waves out in all directions. If that's true, then the intensity is, is a simple relationship. It's the power of the source, it's how much energy it's producing per unit time, that power, divided by the area at which you're going to be. 
So let's say that this is a sphere of radius r. The area is 4 pi r squared for a sphere. So I'm just plugging in the area here, 4 pi r squared. You might remember that um, the area of a disk, just a circle of radius r, that's pi r squared. But the area of a the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. You may have seen that at some point in your life. I'm sure you have. And that's intensity. <laughs>